Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class, which is going to be really beneficial for all of you, not only from the perspective of the examination, but if you are hungry for knowledge, then also this session is going to help you. So let's quickly begin. I hope guys you are aware of this mobile application of ours. And these are the various methods through which you can reach out to us. So this is our mobile number, which has one digit missing here. Uh, so this is our complete mobile number. You can call us, you can WhatsApp us. So whichever mode is best suited for you, you can use that to reach out to us in case you have any kind of query or you want to give us any kind of feedback, okay? So let's begin with the question number one. I hope all of you are ready. So the question number one is, which company has created India's first ever one of its kind drone with parachute integrated system. So here, Eminent Air, which is a startup, has launched this first of its kind drone with parachute integrated system. Majority of the drone companies are in their startup stage only in India because drone sector is one of the emerging sectors in India. Okay, so this is also a startup. Now, what is the parachute integrated system in drone? Because we know that parachutes are usually used so that we can save the human lives on the aircrafts. But why are we using the parachute in the drones when there is no human and drone ka size bhi bahut chota hota hai. So what is the need of parachute on the drone? So the need is that we want to protect the drone from damage in case of crash. Suppose this drone gets crashed or it gets malfunctioned, kuch kharabi ho jati hai isme. So in case of its crash, the drone property should not get damaged too badly. And at the same time, the land and the property and the people would also not get affected if we have this parachute system because the impact of its crash would be absorbed by this parachute. So that's the basic idea of installing the parachute on a drone. Now, we all know that drone is a booming sector in India, or at least even if it is not booming, but a potential sector where the government of India is seeing a lot of potential. For that only, we have launched the PLI scheme for drones. We have integrated the drones in the agriculture as well. So we are going to look, look at the entire aspect of drone with respect to India. Okay. So first of all, First of all, I would discuss with you the uses of drone. Where can we actually put the drone to use? First is the vaccine delivery. We have the hilly areas, we have the remotest areas in the Northeast region and in the Himalayan region. Sikkim hai, Meghalaya hai, Tripura hai, Nagaland hai. So there the road transportation and uh, at the same time cargo transportation is very difficult. In those places, these drones are very beneficial for the delivery of vaccine and the medical equipments and we have seen that drones were used in the past to deliver the medicines and other equipments in Telangana as well as in the northeastern states. Then inspection of oil pipelines and power transmission lines. So drones can be useful in those as well. Anti-locust operations may be drone ka use kiya ja sakta because we can then spread the uh, medicine. Okay. Agricultural spring of the fertilizers, insecticides can be done. Survey of mines can be done where humans cannot go. And it is dangerous for humans as well to go so we can put the drone to use there. Land mapping under the Swamitwa scheme and this is, <coughs> I would say a very important use of the drones in India at present. First is the Swamitwa scheme we are using and secondly, we are using the drones in the Fasal Bima Yojana so that we can actually assess the damage to the crops. So these are two of the most important schemes in which the drones are being put to use. Apart from this, we are also giving drones to the Kisans, the farmers, so that they can put the drones to use and leverage on that technology. Okay, I will discuss about the use of drones in agriculture specifically, but let's look the broader picture here first. Okay, then. So Swamitwa scheme may we are using the drone so that we can issue the digital property cards to the people. Okay, so drone ki se, it becomes very easy to assess the land. Then drone training schools are also being set up so that the pilots can be given the training so that they can operate the drones if efficiently. Now let's look at the picture of drones in the agriculture landscape. 
so here guys you can clearly see that the fertilizers are being spread on the farm and the efficiency is obviously much better than uh, putting the humans to this work obviously because it's a technology it can spray the thousands of land thousands of acres of land in just few minutes so kisan drones are used for spraying, spraying insecticide fertilizers monitoring of crop health and damage for the pm fasal bima yojana so that is the use of kisan drone okay now in order to promote the usage of drones by kisan because drones are expensive and farmers cannot afford the drones therefore the government is providing subsidies to the farmers as well so for individual farmers if they want to buy a drone they will be given the subsidy of up to 5 lakh rupees okay but in case an fpo that is a farmer producer organization buys the drones in bulk obviously it is going to buy the drone so that the farmers associated with the organization can use the drone okay so fpos not only help in channelizing the product from the farm to the market but they also help in uh, increasing the technology so if the fpos are buying the drones for giving it to the farmers then the government is going to provide 75% subsidy on the cost of the drone okay then under this submission on agriculture mechanization so 100% grant will be provided on the cost of the drone or up to 10 lakhs okay suppose that cost of the drone is 10 lakh then entire 10 lakh will be given by the government but in case the cost is 12 lakh or above 10 lakh so up to 10 lakh will be provided by the government or in case the cost of the drone is 8 lakh in that case the government will provide only 8 lakh okay it is not going to provide 10 lakh so it is up to the cost of the drone or 10 lakh whichever is less okay so that is the landscape of kisan drones and the uh, i would say the help given by the government to the farmer so that they can buy a drone now drone ki we are drone ki hum log itni sari baatein to kar rahe hain but where are the drones are we allowed to import drones in india because our industry is not that uh, sufficient or robust that we can fulfill the demand of the drone at present so are we allowed to import the drones no the straight answer is no the drone import can only be done only for the purpose of r and d and safety suppose if the indian army wants to import the drone then it can do so ministry of science and technology or any other private company also if it wants to import the drone for the purpose of r and d only then the government is going to permit the import otherwise for commercial purposes the drone import is not allowed the purpose behind this decision was to make our own industry stand on its own feet okay but there is also a big question to it how will the industry stand on its own feet when we do not have the latest technology because we are not able to import the drones in the market and if the demand if we have more and more drones in the market only then the demand can also be increased and only then when the demand is increased the economy will get a boost the economy related to the drones okay tabhi to zyada manufacturers drone ki industry mein ghusenge jab unhe dikhega ki yahan pe profit hai profit kaise dikhega jab demand hogi log demand karenge us cheez ki aur demand tab karenge jab product available hoga jab wo use karenge so it's a complete cycle right so that is the i would say catch 22 kind of a situation where we are stuck at present as far as drones are concerned okay however the government has launched the pli scheme for drones so that we can give a push to the drone manufacturer so 120 crore rupees the total outlay of the scheme for 3 years okay incentive rate is 20% of the value addition over the 3 Yes. Okay. So for the three years, the scheme will be launched, will be implemented, and twenty percent incentive would be given on the annual turnover to the drone manufacturers. Okay. And annual sales turnover of the Indian drone manufacturing industry is expected to grow from sixty crores to nine hundred crores by twenty twenty four to twenty five. I already told you the reasons, the uses of drones, and if the drone is available in the market then definitely it is a booming sector it is going to see a lot of potential in the coming years which is clearly evident in the numbers also 60 crore se 900 crore tak ki market hai ye okay so that's the potential which the government has seen in this sector and that is why pli scheme for drones are also launched 
ओके आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू ड्रोन का इम्पोर्ट बैन है दैट इज द प्रेजेंट सिचुएशन एंड गाइज दिस इज द रूल दीज आर दी ड्रोन रूल्स ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन अकॉर्डिंग टू विच दीज आर दी जोन इन टू विच द एयर स्पेस हैज बिन डिवाइडेड फॉर द purpose of drone flying okay suppose i buy a do- drone from any indian company only obviously i can do that from there only i cannot import the drone so if i buy a drone i can only fly it in the green zone or up to the yellow zone red zone mein we are not allowed to fly our drones okay without permission so the red zone would be 5 km area surrounding the air- aeroplane okay the air uh, the aircraft then we have inner yellow line which would be 3 kilometers above uh, beyond the red line then outer yellow zone and then the green zone at present 90% of india's air space is green zone okay kitne hi airports hai hamare paas okay so keeping that in mind 90% of india's space is green zone and we can fly our drones in this zone without any permission okay that's the benefit although we should not put the drones for a negative use or for the wrong use okay the next question is the new india assurance has launched its pay as you drive policy with features like discounts on renewals coverage beyond distance limit and enhanced protection such as nil depreciation roadside help return to invoice etc the new india assurance is a public sector insurance company who is the cmd of the new india assurance so guys the cmd is neerja kapoor okay so first of all let me start with the company itself okay then i will tell you the news because in the news i have to explain you pay as you drive product as well because this product is very much i would say rampant in the market it has a very high demand in the market so you need to understand the concept if you want to go into the rbi examination okay because without conceptual understanding you won't be able to retain the fact and you won't be able to counter any question in your phase 2 specifically because okay? isse related if there is any conceptual question then it can only be in your face so first the new india assurance is a public sector company and along with this company we have these other state owned insurance companies okay like the life insurance the general insurance the united india insurance company the oriental insurance company national insurance company and agriculture insurance company okay so these are the general insurance companies and the life insurance company as well which is under the st- the government of india now in the union budget of previous year fy23 the government had announced that it is going to privatize two public sector banks and one public sector general insurance company however the name was not disclosed the names are not disclosed even now and in this year's budget there was no mention of the privatization so that is the fact but you should be aware of this fact that these are the companies which are owned by the state and one of these companies would be privatized in the future by the government of india along with two other private sector banks now my question from all of you is that recently the finance minister had announced its crack hub crack squad in which there is a person who has been given this responsibility of privatizing the banks and the insurance company and this particular information has been provided in the spotlight as well and i expect you guys to tell me that who is the person given this responsibility of privatizing the banks and the insurance company okay now the news so the news is that this company has also launched this pay as you drive policy and it is uh, a policy which is it is a new product in the financial market so i'm going to explain what it is okay so pay as you drive suppose there is a person a and there is a person b both of them have a car of rupees 5 lakh so they insure their car for rupees 5 lakh and remember that the insurance in the vehicles is not similar to the insurance in life and health okay in life we have a minimum sorry maximum sum assured which we get if any if any death happens right but in this case the 
sum assured is linked to the value of the vehicle okay so therefore the sum assured decreases year by year okay that is clear now premium the premium amount in the pay as you drive insurance product is linked to your driving is linked to the usage you put the car to for example this person drives 20 kilometers in a month and this person drives 150 kilometers in a month okay because the usage of this person is higher therefore the premium of this person would be higher and because the usage of this person is lower therefore the premium amount would be lower in comparison to this person because the premium here is directly linked to the usage i hope this is clear and this is the product called pay as you drive okay so that is all apart from this the add ons are also available like enhanced safeguards such as de zero depreciation because depreciate ho rahi hai har saal value that is why the maximum sum assured is decreasing because we are using the car and we are using the vehicle and that is why the vehicle is getting uh, depreciated and because of that depreciation the ultimate sum assured is getting lower i hope you are understanding the basic idea of this pay as you drive scheme because in the covid tenure this product is already very famous in the us but why has it been introduced in the indian market because it was observed that in covid period majority of the people were not using their cars but still they had to bear this high cost of premium so that is why that was the lacuna which was observed and that is why this product was introduced in the indian market i hope you this is clear so engine protection return to invoice roadside assistance etc etc so these are the add ons obviously add ons would have a additional cost <coughs> okay question number 3 is according to rbi data there were 14.19 lakh micro atms across the country as of december 2022 which of the following banks own the highest number of micro atms so a very interesting and a very important question at the same time such data based questions are regularly asked in many of the banking exams so understand the importance of such questions and remember the data now which bank owns the highest number of uh, micro atms it is fino payment bank okay so uh, 14.19 lakh micro atms were found as of december 2022 okay and remember this is as of this is not only of december so this data is not of december only it is that up to december 2022 there were these many micro atms operating in the country okay so fino has the highest number of atms micro atms 3.55 lakh micro atms were there which is over a quarter of all the atms all these micro atms and then we have sbm bank india and the nsdl payments bank okay now what is a micro atm so guys this is a micro atm which almost all of you must have used once in a life or seen once in a life okay so these are the micro atms and these form the part of the payment infrastructure digital payment infrastructure and in order to give a boost to the digital payment infrastructure in india RBI has launched the payment infrastructure development fund okay in 2021 so do remember that as well when the fund was launched it was 341 rupee crore although in the same year in 2021 only at the end of the year the corpus in itself doubled because the expenditure was very huge but it it was 345 sorry 345 crores okay so because of the expenditure increase so in the same year the corpus doubled and at present what is the exact corpus the information is not yet uh, there in the public domain if it comes out i will tell you the exact expenditure of rbi as well as the authorized card payment uh, card networks uh, on this scheme okay so that is all now i would like to ask a question from all of you and my question is that you have to tell me how many payment banks are there in the schedule 2 of rbi act 1934 and also tell me the names of those banks which are there in the schedule 2 question number 4 on december 1 2022 rbi launched the first pilot of the e rupee retail segment in eight banks which of the following banks has not been chosen in the first phase 
So here, what is the right answer? The right answer is Canada Bank. Now the news is that Infibeam Avenues Payment Brand, which is CC Avenue, it has launched the, it has become the first payment gateway to allow the transaction in the CBDC, that is e rupee. First of all, I hope all of you are aware what is e rupee. It is basically nothing but the digital version of our own currency. Okay, digital rupee. Like we have the 100 rupee, 2000 rupee note. So now that note is on the online platform that is the e rupee. So it is a legal tender, it is a fiat currency. Okay, so do understand this point that it is a fiat currency, whereas cryptocurrency is not a fiat currency. Okay, now. What is the news all about? The news is that this payment gateway has allowed the transactions in the e rupee. So earlier also when we used to make a payment online, we did not transfer the exact cash. We used to make the payment online only. Okay. And now also the payment will be done online only. It is just that the form of the currency would be in the online. Okay. Would be in the form of e rupee. So that's the basic distinction. Now let's discuss about the CBDC a little more so guys rbi had launched in december 2022 the first phase of the e rupee retail segment and eight banks were chosen so in the first phase sbi icici yes bank idfc first these were chosen and for the second phase bank of baroda union bank hdfc kotak uh, have been chosen to spread the e rupee in these cities Ahmedabad, Gangtok, Guwahati, Hyderabad, Indore, Kochi, Lucknow, Patna and Shimla. Okay, so that is the basic idea. The last question is who has been appointed as the India country head of the Morgan Stanley. So it is guys Arun Kohli. Okay, so Arun Kohli was earlier the chief operating officer in the uh, EMEA region, Europe, Middle East and Africa region. My question from all of you is just that you need to tell me that Morgan Stanley is the company of which country, okay? It is a foreign company and it also provides the GDP forecast for various other countries as well as the entire world. So your task is to find out that in which country is its headquarters located. So here guys, today's video end. I hope you have enjoyed the video. And thank you so much guys for watching it. Stay healthy, keep doing the hard work because your hard work will pay you off definitely. Okay, goodbye.